This is a brand new program. Maine is at the forefront. Um, nobody else has really done this yet. In fact, biosurveillance as a whole, as a whole uh, concept is completely new. Um, it's based on work done um, by Philip Careless, who is a grad student at the University of Guelph in Ontario. And he found out that this wasp will, will catch buprestids, or I guess it was known that, but he realized that they would also catch the emerald ash borer, and he wondered whether that might be a good way of monitoring for emerald ash borer. And so he's been working and doing the research, and we've been working really closely with him, taking his research and turning it, we're the first ones that are turning it into an operational, functional monitoring program. Because the big problem with emerald ash borer is that it's up in the tops of the trees, nobody sees it's there, and even if they're looking, it's often 10 to 12 years before people find it. By that time, it's spread around, people move it around when they move firewood. If a tree is looking kind of sick, they might chop it down and nobody notices that it's there. And so it's hard to find them, and we don't really have any really good way of finding them, but this wasp is great. It hunts up in the tops of the trees and is really good at catching emerald ash borers. This is called Cerceris fumipennis. It doesn't have, it's one of the hunting wasps. It doesn't have a common name. So it's related to the spider hunting wasp. What it'll do is it'll come out of the nest and it'll fly around and just sort of orient itself for a couple of minutes. And then it'll fly off to the trees and hunt, hunt a, a buprestid of some sort, fly back, and it doesn't eat the beetle itself. What it's doing is it's using it to provision its nest because down in that hole is basically one long tunnel. And then off to the side, she has little nest chambers, which are little holes. And she'll fill that full of beetles anywhere between five and you know, 15 or 17 or so, depending on the size of the beetles. If it's big beetles, she doesn't need that many. If it's little beetles, she needs a lot. And when, that's, when she has enough beetles, the very last one, she'll lay an egg right on the beetle and then she'll stuff, she'll just close that little hole off, that little nest chamber off, and dig another one. And that nest chamber then, the egg will sit there and hatch in a couple of weeks, and it's got this food that's nice and fresh because it's paralyzed, and the wasp larva will eat that, and it spends the winter under the ground, and then the next spring it pupates, and then sometime in the summer, usually in July, uh, it emerges. So we found about 30 of these, of these nests in various places, and about mm, 20 of them or so were good for biosurveillance um, because they need to be big enough and they also need to have ash trees nearby because if there's no ash trees nearby, you're not going to have emerald ash borer. So of those 30, I think we, or those, I guess 20 or so, most of them we have volunteers um, that are adopting them, so the people in, the, in the, that community. Girl Scout troops, we have about three Girl Scout troops. We have city arborists and city parks people who are trying to protect the trees of their city. We've got some families that are doing this. We just have individuals who are interested. Most of the people that see this think it's a pretty cool system. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, this is the very first year that we're doing this operational biosurveillance. And we hope to collect, collect beetles. Um, and we're just stealing away a, a small proportion of the beetles that the wasps bring in. And if we can collect 50 beetles from each of these sites, then we're pretty certain, we can be very certain that there's no emerald ash borer in that area if we don't find emerald ash borer. If we do find emerald ash borer, then you know, we know it's fairly close and we'll use the beetles to um, basically to pinpoint.